Good morning. Good morning. We're all sitting here on the porch, just in our rocking chairs, watching the cornfield blow in the wind. It's great. Like a bunch of old men. Nice and slow. <laughs> Where are we this morning? Oh, God. Kansas, I think. Marysville. Don't ask me. I just found out it was Wednesday. It's in Marysville, you're right. So where are we? Uh, Marysville, Kansas. <laughs> there's, I, I could have looked up, but there's a little hint right behind me. Look that way. This is the Hollenberg Station and Transportation, one of the Pony Express stops. By the looks of this building, it's not holding up too well, but there's a lot of really cool stuff inside of it. These are all uh, hand hammered nails. They would have been made by a blacksmith in the blacksmith shop. All done by hand. They're not machine made nails. This whole building is put together that way. It's unusual to see. It's unusual to see this building this intact after this many years and with this construction. It's pretty unusual. It's very cool to see this. I was talking to Ranger up front, he said something real neat. From St. Joe, Missouri, the wagon trains, they would wait for the grasses to get like six, seven inches tall. That way they could feed on the trail and not have to haul uh, hay and grains. But they would spread out like up to a mile wide just so they all can do their own thing. But when they got up to this point, everybody funneled together and that's why the ruts outside are so deep. This is like a major freeway in the 1800s where everybody came together, resupply here and then take off again. The area that I'm standing in right now is a recreation of the Rock Creek Station and they actually found a photograph in California at a library there of some sort and they knew that it was a Pony Express station, they just didn't know which one it belonged to. Using the photograph itself they were able to determine through the topography and just the general surrounding areas that it was most likely this one and using that photograph they created these buildings beside me to make it look like what it was. Back in the day, they didn't have mattresses. They had the ropes on the beds and the bed frame. And what they would do after a while, they'd sag a little bit. So they have to tighten them up. And that's where the saying, sleep tight, comes from. This is a toll bridge that was erected to help immigrants make their way west and cross Rock Creek, which was pretty difficult at the time. Back over on this side over here, they had to use hoists and use double teams to get the wagons up and out. So when this bridge was built, they charged immigrants on a sliding scale basis, anywhere between 50 cents and a dollar, depending on how much you could afford. If you want to cross the bridge, you must answer the question, is it an African swallow or a European swallow? <laughs> <laughs>
Igor Kearney, and this is the very first military installation set up along the Oregon and California trails, and it was established to protect the immigrants who are making their way west. We just left the Little Blue River earlier this morning, and immigrants would have worked their way up to the Platte River they would have followed for the majority of their way across Nebraska. Looking at the swales up there, it had to be almost as wide as a freeway from so many immigrants coming and going and covering each other's tracks and creating new tracks. If you look at it, you can almost imagine them coming up and down. Here. So we're standing on top of Windlass Hill. So the ruts that we were passing earlier, the big trench that came down the hill, that's just from thousands of wagons that had just worked their way down the hill, just locking their brakes, sliding down. Erosion helped it along, dug it even deeper. But as it comes down into this valley right here, it hooks off over to the right or towards that direction by the highway and then parallels it as it works its way down. Oh yeah, so this is it right here. Or like maybe they came down this over right here. here. Yeah, where Kevin and Joe are right there, they actually just started coming down this hill, and over time it just got deeper and deeper and deeper. I mean, if you look, it's what, it's about like 10 feet deep now. Look at that. Hi, the water took out the rest of it. Pretty cool, huh? Yes, it is. I cannot say at what angle we descend, but it is so great that some go so far as to say the road hangs a little past the perpendicular. <laughs> so you can see what happened is they worked their way up onto this range of hills and if you follow the swales all the way up past the third set of hills over there, they just worked their way over, came along, tried to avoid this big canyon off to my right, got to this point and then decided, you know, we have nowhere else to go but down. And that's when Windlass Hill made its name in this hillside. From what we understand, this is actually the very first major obstacle that the immigrants would have seen since leaving Independence, Missouri. So they were the two four-wheelers. They were the two. Yeah. Well, the first. The very first, yeah. <laughs> and at this point, they had been on the road 40 days. It was 40 days from Independence, Missouri to here. Three, yeah, three, yeah. three yeah. took us yeah. three. And we're not out of alcohol yet. We still have whiskey. <laughs> that's why we're still alive. <laughs> exactly, that's why we're alive. We have whiskey still. <laughs> Lo 
down near the mouth of Ash Hollow, a number of springs of cold and crystal water gushed forth from under the high and barren bluff, of which without ceremony and with common consent we all partook most freely. The best and purest ever drank, a beverage prepared by God himself. We're standing in front of a body of water. I believe these are the springs of Ash Hollow. This was actually an important landmark feature for immigrants making their way on the Oregon and California Trail. It was at this point that they realized they were heading in the right direction towards Fort Laramie. So we're standing in front of John Holman's grave. This uh, individual, John Holman, died in 1852, which was a particularly bad year for cholera. And that's uh, more than likely the cause of his death as well. It's amazing to think they're coming through the area in their wagons and all of a sudden they see this thing off that there's nothing like it. They might be thinking that somebody put that there just for us to guide us on our way because there's nothing else like it just sticking out in the plains. You can actually see the, the wagon tracks on the other side of the road. They show you where Mitchell Pass is, which is right over there. And these red lines right here show you where the original route was. And it's just oh, yeah, beyond. You can, see. you can see it, huh? Oh, yeah. The wagon swales and the grass. Ah, uh, yeah. You can see, see the it. wagon swales in there. The landmarks indicated our progress and helped uh, break the monotony. Like the milestones along the journey of life, there was one less to pass. So you got to realize that all these wagons, these immigrants were coming in, was filled with their flour, their tools, their furniture, whatever they could take with them from the East Coast. So there was no room for people. Most of the immigrants who made the 2000 trek from Independence, Missouri, all the way to California, did it on foot. A lot of people didn't make it. Well, what's the odds? It's 90% uh, made it, yeah. or one in 10 died. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which one will you be? That's why we only have nine Jeeps. <laughs> right. <laughs> the 10th is already dead. <laughs>
We're standing over a bridge that's uh, located over the North Platte River. Actually just a little bit to the south of it is the actual point where people crossing over the immigrant trail would have been forced to ford the river or take a ferry in order to get to Fort Laramie. I think somebody graffitied my wagon. California bust, here we come. to Laramie Ford this morning and passed through the fort registering our names and found that 16,913 men, women 235, children 242, wagons 4,672, horses 14,974, mules 4,641, oxen 7,427, cows 465, passed. Besides, nearly as many more had probably gone without registering. Alfred Davis, June 12, 18. This is where you get locked up if you're not behaving. Registered Cliff, Wyoming. This is uh, the first of many locations along the trail where immigrants took the time to carve their names into the rock faces or cliff sides like this as a reminder that they've been here. Standing in some of the best preserved wagon ruts or wagon swales that you find on pretty much the entire immigrant trail. At least here in Wyoming, you can actually see all the different layers that it cut through throughout the years as wagons came up this hill. 